American Dragon presents Chinese Medicine in America. My name is Joel Penner. I'm a doctor of Oriental Medicine, a California licensed acupuncturist and herbalist, and a professor of Oriental Medicine. I'm also co-author of the textbook, Zongfu Syndrome's Differential Diagnosis and Treatment. In this episode, I will be talking about the lungs. It is very important at this point for me to remind you that even though they share the same names, the Chinese organs are vastly different from the Western organs. If you try to impose your Western understanding on the Chinese organs, you will get completely confused. Only in certain instances do they overlap. The Zong Fu are energy or tree transformers in a complex bioenergetic system and their functions relate to their qi transformation processes. The lungs are one of the three sources of qi in the body, which includes the spleen and kidneys. This is called the qi axis. The lungs have six important functions which will be presented. First, the lungs govern qi and respiration. This is their most important function. Please take a look at this chart. The lungs collect the qi of the chest called zong qi and combine it with food qi or gu qi to create qi that is usable by the body. Zong qi is a type of lung qi that resides in the chest and aids the functions of the lungs and heart to promote good circulation in the limbs and control the strength of the voice. Weak lung qi can lead to fatigue, breathlessness, and a weak voice. There are two forms of usable qi. First is defensive qi or wei qi which flows outside the channels, through the skin and muscles, and protects against external invasion. The second is nutritive qi, yin qi, which is spread all over the body to nourish all of the tissues and promote the physiological functioning of all the organs. The lungs are the most external of the zong or yin organs. They have the most direct contact with the external environment and for that reason are the most easily attacked by external pathogenic factors, such as viruses, bacteria, or allergens. Second, the lungs control the channels and blood vessels. The lungs aid the heart in circulating blood and play an important role in maintaining the health of the blood vessels. They also control the circulation of qi in the channels. If lung qi is strong, the circulation of qi in blood will be good and the limbs will be warm. If the lung qi is weak, qi will not be able to push the blood and the limbs, particularly the hands, will be cold. Third, the lungs control dispersing and descending. The lungs disperse or spread defensive qi, wei qi, and body fluids all over the body to the space between the skin and muscles. They warm the skin and protect the body from exterior pathogenic invasion. When the person has a cold, most of the symptoms relate to the lungs dispersing function. Everything feels blocked with a stuffy nose, body aches, a headache, coughing, and sneezing. The lungs also spread body fluids to the skin in the form of a fine mist, which moistens and regulates the opening and closing of the pores. When the lung function is normal, the pores open and close as they are supposed to, with normal sweating. In the case of an external invasion, sweating functions to expel the pathogenic factor from the exterior of the body. When lung function is impaired by an excess condition, such as wing cold, the pores become blocked and there is no sweating to expel the pathogen. If the lung's dispersing function is impaired, fluids may accumulate under the skin in the upper body, causing edema, usually of the face or upper limbs. The lungs also have a descending function. They are the uppermost organs in the body, therefore their qi must descend. Lung qi descends to the kidneys, which grasp and hold it. Descending relates to both qi and fluids. As was presented in the last episode on the kidneys, fluids descend to the kidneys and bladder. The pure fluids are sent back up via the min mun to the lungs, while the impure fluids are excreted by the bladder. If the lungs descending function is impaired, Qi accumulates in the chest, causing coughing, breathlessness, and stuffiness in the chest. It can also cause retention of urine. Impaired lung function may also affect large intestine function. If the large intestine does not receive enough Qi from the lungs, 
they will not have enough energy for peristalsis and there can be constipation. In short, the lungs dispersing and descending functions ensure the entering and exiting of qi, regulate breathing and the exchange of qi between the environment and the body, ensure that all organs receive the necessary nourishment from qi, blood, and body fluids, prevent fluids from stagnating, and prevent the scattering and exhaustion of lung qi. Fourth, the lungs regulate the water passages. As mentioned earlier, after receiving the refined fluids from the spleen, the lungs reduce them into a fine mist and spread them throughout the area under the skin. The spleen is responsible for transforming and transporting food and drink into qi and body fluids, which are then sent to the lungs for further modification. This will be explained in more detail in the next episode. If the lungs function of regulating the water passages is impaired, the congested fluids may give rise to edema. The lungs also direct the fluids down to the kidneys and bladder. The kidneys receive the fluids vaporize part of them and send them back up to the lungs to keep them moist. If this function is impaired, there may be urinary retention, especially in the elderly. The lungs are also responsible for the excretion of body fluids, both through urination and sweat. As mentioned earlier, the lungs influence the defensive or Wei Qi, which flows under the skin. If Wei Qi is strong, the person will have strong resistance to external pathological influences. If lung qi is weak, wei qi will also be weak and the pores will not be strong enough to close, which may result in spontaneous sweating. The person will be prone to catching colds and flu. When this type of sweating occurs, a certain amount of wei qi is lost in the sweat. If wei qi is weak, and even sometimes if it is strong, external pathogenic factors can invade the skin and muscles and obstruct its circulation, which in turn can impair the lungs dispersing function even further, causing sneezing or coughing. Sixth, the lungs open into the nose. If lung qi is strong, the nose will be open, respiration will be easy, and the sense of smell will be good. If the lungs are invaded, by an exterior pathogenic factor, the nose will be blocked. There may be a loss of the sense of smell and there may be sneezing. If there is heat in the lungs, there may be bleeding from the nose and a loss of the sense of smell. From this presentation, I hope you now have a better understanding of the crucial role the lungs play in the functioning of the human body. That's going to do it for this episode. If you have questions, please contact me at joel at americandragon.com. In our next episode, I will be describing the functions of the spleen pancreas. I'll see you then.